The iTrack dock has a rubber pad which accommodates three types of iPad. The iPad Mini here, an iPad Air and a standard iPad. All three of these iPads must be lightning connected and you'll have to move the iTrack dock's central lightning connector accordingly to connect them. The iTrack dock charges your iPad at the same time as recording and playing back music, which is a great benefit and makes sure the battery doesn't die so you won't lose your recording. First, plug in the power supply. Ensure the switch is set to the off position. Then plug the other end into the mains. Next, set up a microphone stand and screw on the mic clip. Once connected, screw the mic into the clip. Both the mic and clip come with the iTrack Dock Studio Pack. Now connect the XLR cable to the mic and plug the other end into Input 2's mic input. Connect a pop shield to your mic stand and place it about 2 to 3 inches from the mic capsule. This stops any plosive parts of the words from distorting the vocal recording, like this. It doesn't sound great, does it? Now plug in the jack lead for your guitar into Input 1's instrument input, and yes, plug it into your guitar. Connecting speakers to the iTrack dock is really easy. Just plug your balanced cables into the back of the speakers, then plug the other ends into the monitor outputs on the back of the dock. Make sure everything is turned down, then switch on your speakers. If you don't have speakers, fear not. The headphone output is on the side of the iTrack dock. With the headphone volume turned down, ask your artist to put headphones on and get a feel for how they're sounding. Adjust the headphone level to suit and switch on the direct monitor button to reduce any latency which can be off-putting to the recording process. Latency sounds a bit like this in your headphones. So you want so you to want start, start recording all using music onto iPad, but you're not, not sure what equipment you might need. So you can see why it's really annoying. Once the artist is happy with the headphone mix, you need to check that what they're singing and playing won't clip or distort. The iTrack dock indicates if the input is clipping by glowing red, so carefully turn the input gains down until they glow green. It's a good idea to ask your singer to sing the loudest part of the track at this point. After installing the tape app, configure the inputs by tapping on these sections so they're set to input 1 and input 2. And when you're ready, hit record. Well, she sinks to the deep with a chain round her foot, yet she's smiling as it drags her body down. When times get rough, I'll be placing my bed that she's flirting with the and that's how to record with the iTrack dock. Our next episode will show you how to set up and record with the iTrack solo. So click here to watch it.